most actual Keeper of the Lost Cities book, not including Unlocked because it, it's pretty much a guidebook, we have this. We have Legacy. Cool, cool, cool. So let's get right into it. So first of all, let's cut on with part one, which is the summary. So number one, you remember last time Sophie has literally no match? She's been traumatized because of that because she knows that her boyfriend will freak out and he does. And she really wants to find out her biologi biological parents so that, you know, the no match will, no, the no match thing will go away. And so she goes up to Forkle and asks him, however, she, he goes, nope, nope, I'm not going to tell you, it's for their own personal protection and freak you. And Sophie's like, bro, why? I want to know my parents. I want to go with my girlfriend. I mean, boyfriend, whatever. And it's really, really annoying. However, Forkle does do something helpful, which is he says, so guys, um, we've had situations happen with every single species except the dwarves. So, this is just a guess, we might be dealing with dwarves this time, which is, which is pretty cool. And meanwhile, the council, who hasn't really been doing anything, not gonna lie, the past like 16,000 books, they go, okay, we're gonna create a contingency team and make you guys, you know, you, you, you guys who's, who's literally saved the elven race, like, 20 million times, we decided to finally give you an official title. Which is great, because finally, we don't have to worry about the council being on our freaking butts and backs and trying to like kill us every time we do something moderately helpful. And so they create this team known as Team Valiant. And we got T we got Stina, which uh, would, not, would not be my first choice. Bianna, Willy, and Dex. And we got this Pog team. And Keith and Fitz aren't allowed in the team because number one, Keith is, well, you know, her, her mom, his mom is Gisela, who is also known as the leader of the Never Seen. And this Fitz is just like, they don't want, I don't know, they don't want to back her or something. I don't really understand the reason. So Team Valiant is investigating and they're like, okay, we don't know what's going on with the dwarves. And it's probably something about Shadow Fox because Tam is still like captured by uh, the Never Seen. And we're trying to find out what's going on and we find out that a lot of the Magistian, which is some sort of stone that absorbs darkness and stuff. It has this weird like, some of the, some of the black stones within, within the Dwarven, Dwarven place is replaced with Magistian, which is rigged to explode. Which is honestly not good, like, really, because that means there's a spy within the dwarves, and that's really, really bad. And meanwhile, Sophie does another one of those life-threatening surgeries to reset herself, and she manages to learn how to inflict uh, in a controlled range. So back when, uh, beforehand, how her inflicting work was, she was like this, and then inflicting on, that everything around her is, and every, everyone feels pain or anger or whatever. However, now she can use it like a missile and go boop, 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 and uh, target the people she wants to. And that's actually, I think that's a representation of that, you know, with the, with the lines and stuff. I think it's Sophie using her inflicting, which is pretty cool. And also, she's learning how to control her enhancing, so she doesn't have to wear gloves all the time, which is really, really convenient. And Sophie's really traumatized, and she, she needs help, so she goes up to O'Reilly to ask for advice and talk to her about Team Valiant and all that. And she she asks O'Reilly if O'Reilly is her mom, and she has heard this like little thing about how um, all empaths uh, skip a beat when they lie, and O'Reilly skips a beat when they say, so it's like, O'Reilly is Sophie's mom, that explains a lot of stuff. And Sophie needs to be a matchable forever because O'Reilly is her mom. So, yeah. I mean, it would bring chaos if she revealed it in the first place. Which really, really sucks. And then Fitz breaks up with Sophie and Sophie breaks up with Fitz because Fitz, uh, Sophie is spending more time with her best friend rather than Fitz. And also Fitz, I think, is kind of caring about the unmatchable thing a lot and Sophie's kind of damaged by that. And honestly speaking... Yeah, she, so Fitz is kind of being a prick, like seriously. And I was right on the dot last time because I thought that maybe in the last video, I was like, oh, maybe it's going to affect um, uh, Fitz in a way because it's it's weird. It's, it's I feel like Fitz would care about that. And I was right now. Yeah. 
And yeah, and then we got the final battle with the dwarves and the never seen another. Hey, come to the square and we're gonna kill all of you. Or like, just come to the square, but the last part is implied. And we come to this, and we kind of split it up into two teams. The rest go into the square, and the other half of Sophie protects the king of the dwarves alongside and goes to goes to the throne room. And then we find out that Frick, the dwarves, yeah, they're they're not on our side. The king of the dwarves, they're literally working with the Never Seen, which really really sucks. And we're starting to lose. And we tie up and uh, and. And Gisela's entire plan was to literally strap Keith to a chair and shoot light and shadows, shadow flux and light at him and sort of make him transform, which was really, really, I'm kind of scared, man. I don't know what's going to happen. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be insane. And Keith is knocked out because of that. And it kind of makes sense because like, why would Gisela make Tam use Shadow Flux and why would she take Tam specifically? It makes no sense and we realize that that's that's the reason. And Keith transforms and we manage to like smuggle Keith out just cause like, you know, no one except Elwyn is gonna be able to heal Keith and he might die if he does if we don't get into Elwyn. So Gisela, frick you, go frick off, like seriously. And we grab Keith and it's all good and that's the end of the book. A couple things. Number one, um, Keith is now the officially the anti Sophie. I don't know what abilities Keith is going to have. However, it, it would be pretty cool to know. I feel like it's gonna be something incredibly OP, maybe connected to the fact that he's an empath, like I don't know what um what kind of empath ability it would be, honestly. Cause it could be like I don't know. I'm trying to think. Like empath ability that makes sense to be uh i don't know i feel like it's, it's gonna be an extension of the empath ability maybe render people emotionless or mind control i mean i guess no that's that's more of a mesmerizer thing but i don't know i thought i thought it would be something really really powerful and it would be pretty cool and part two analysis so a couple things uh, Forkle mentions that every species except the dwarves have been attacked and we realize that humans are a species as well So maybe I was right on the dot in the last book when I said maybe the last like two books of the series is gonna be about you know the The children, I mean the human race and Ves Vespera and Gisela are gonna attack the humans and it's gonna be cool And that that's something that I feel like would happen and it would utilize Sophie's Special kind of perspective because she was she's kind of half human after all so I thought it would make a lot of sense and Keith is the anti Sophie. I think this would create a very interesting dynamic between the two. And also that I just it just makes me ship them a lot more because number one, Fitz is a little piece of censored words. And he's being really, really bad. And also I feel like Keith, like he doesn't care if Sophie's unmatchable or not, I feel like. But our dear Fitz definitely does. So I feel like perhaps Keith is gonna be the one who really gets with Sophie later on uh, if the series ends. And hopefully it's not the type of ending where they all die because that'd be really, really sad. And also, yeah, if I were the author, I would put Keith and Sophie together because that opposite dynamic, that classic Romeo and Juliet dynamic with the thing, we've seen that happen before. We've seen that friends and enemies cliche happen all the time. However, it's a cliche because it works and I think it would be really, really nice to put them together. I don't know. And then we got he, and then we got the dwarf betrayal. I think that's really, really well done. It's another like for me. I feel like a lot of people think Shannon Messenger. Some of her writing is very repetitive because of the twists. However, I feel like every twist has a unique twist to them. Pun kind of intended. I I kind of realized it was a pun while I was saying it. And the thing is, like this time, the thing is that the species isn't really cooperating with our friends, the elves, and they're turning against the elven council and they're being evil. And I think that was an excellent twist and it was real, very well done. I really liked Legacy. I liked Team Valiant a lot. That sense of them coming together and the council finally recognizing for these these little kids who've been saving their 
But literally for the entire series, and they're like, oh, we're gonna um, control Sophie and take away her abilities. Oh, we're gonna put them in prison. Oh, we're gonna send them to Exilium. No, we're gonna send them to exile. Like, council, bro. <laughs> You've gotten your stupid, like, faces saved by these little kids who are like hundreds of years older, younger than you. Like, nine times more like, like, 500 times and we still don't have an official team for them finally like seriously i've been waiting for them to kind of make them a government official thing or something and i think it's i think that's i i, find, I personally find that really satisfying just not not really as any special like analysis stuff but i just find that really satisfying and yeah that's pretty much it uh i definitely i would rate this book like a 9 8.5 to 9 out of 10 just because it's really really well done and the twist was fun and uh, Sophie's ability controlling was cool and all that, and that all kind of adds up to make a really good book. And like always, your plot cluster, highly recommended. Have a great day.